Hello friends, today I'll be teaching you some basic hand sewing stitches and the fundamentals to hand sewing clothing. Please keep in mind that there are many combinations of stitches you can use to hand sew a garment and some stitches are better than others, but the ones I'll be teaching you today are the basic ones used on simple garments. To get started, there are some basic tools you'll need and I keep mine in this handy tool pouch for easy access. So first, you'll need a pair of snips or scissors for cutting thread. I use these small blue snips. You'll also need some hand needles or hand sewing needles. I keep mine wrapped in some cloth for easy access when I take them out of the package. Today I'm using a size 5 needle, I believe, but between a 5 and a 10 is perfectly fine for the basic things that we're doing on the fabric we're using. You'll also need a seam gauge to measure seam allowance when you're sewing. You'll need a block or cake of beeswax for pulling through the thread and making it easier to work with and pull through the fabric. I prefer to use a 100% beeswax block. You'll also need a seam ripper if necessary. Um, sometimes it is necessary to use a seam ripper, but for the most part you can use your needle or your fingers to pull out any loose threads or threads that get tangled or messed up while you're sewing. Of course you'll also need thread. I prefer to use cotton or linen thread for sewing, but basic polyester thread works as well. And you'll also need a thimble. I prefer to use an adjustable thimble ring for comfort. You can get a metal or a leather thimble ring. I prefer to wear mine on my ring or middle finger so that when I'm sewing I can push the needle through. But you can definitely um, use it on your thumb as well and you can also use a thimble that's in a dome shape more commonly seen um, mainstream. Some other tools you may need are tailor's chalk and pins. I'll show you when those will be needed as well, but in the meantime, let's get started. So today we're going to be sewing parts of the Strata Top by Sew Liberated, which is one of the kits we offer in the shop. When hand sewing a garment, you wanna make sure you choose a fabric with a looser weave for sewing. So this fabric that I'm sewing with is linen. I prefer linen because it has a very prominent weave to it. You can see the lines of the weave and this helps when sewing straight lines as well so you don't always have to rely on your markings. You can use the weave of the fabric to sew a straight line. Also keep in mind that as you work your fabric will fray from the manipulation that you're doing when you're moving it around in your hands. So you want to make sure you choose a fabric that won't fray as badly um, or has minimal fraying and minimal loose threads when it's cut. So today I'll be using a dark contrasting thread for this video so that you can see what I'm doing easily. Um, when sewing, I do prefer to use a thread that matches the color and the type of fabric I'm working with, but for the video purposes, I'll be using a contrasting. So to start out the strata top, um, the instructions tell us to stay stitch the neckline. So first we're going to thread our needle so that we can get ready to stay stitch the neckline with one of the most basic common stitches, which is the running stitch. So the running stitch is a basic stitch I use to stay stitch the neckline. Generally, you wanna make the length of your thread to your from your hand to your elbow. And for this video, I am going to be using a single layer of thread versus a double strand layer. So I'm gonna thread the needle through and for the single layer, I'm just going to be leaving a tail when I go through just because the stay stitching is temporary so it doesn't need to be as sturdy. So I leave a tail for a single thread. For a double threaded, um, I would just bring the tails together and then I would have two layers of thread. But for this part, I'm going to just be using one layer of thread. So I go ahead and I pull that thread through the beeswax cake a couple of times. You really don't need to pull it through that many times. Um, you just want to make sure it's evenly coated to the end um, and that it slides through naturally. 
gently. You don't want to pull so that your thread snaps. So for day stitching the neckline, we're going to be beginning with a running stitch. And to begin, I'm going to put my needle through my fabric and make a few stitches in the same spot over and over, just about three or four times so that my thread is anchored to the fabric. You can make a knot if you would like to. Um, you can knot your thread beforehand, but I prefer to just begin by just anchoring it just because it's easier um, to just pull the, the needle through and just make a couple um, stationary stitches. So to do a running stitch, you simply pull the needle in and out of the fabric in an up and down motion, the length of the needle, working to keep the spacing the same as you pull in and out, and then you just pull your thread through. So the running stitch can also be used when you're gathering as well. Um, what you would do is you would simply pull in and out over and over again, just like you would start the regular running stitch. And again, we're demonstrating that by going in and out, up and down through the fabric, the length of the needle, pulling the thread through. And then if we wanted to gather the fabric, then we would simply pull the thread that's attached and it would gather itself. So that's how you do gathering stitches with a running stitch as well. Just felt like um, throwing that in there since we're already working with a running stitch. But we just need these stitches to be straight and stay in place since they're for stay stitching. So we're not going to be using a gathering stitch, of course. So we're just going to continue stay stitching down the edge of the neckline until the other side. And then once we're done with that, we move on to the next step of the top, which would be the back stitch. So now that we've demonstrated a running stitch, we're going to go to another basic hand sewing stitch, which is the back stitch. To demonstrate this stitch, I'm going to be sewing the middle seam of this top for the back. The strata top back is actually cut on the fold, but I cut this on the selvage to preserve fabric and for this demonstration. So for this stitch, I recommend using tailor's chalk or some sort of marking tool to mark your seam allowance. And this is also where a seam gauge comes into play. So you'll want to use the marker on the seam gauge to set your seam allowance measurement. And then you'll want to measure your seam allowance from the edge of the fabric that you're sewing the seam side on and then mark a line going all the way down the seam so you have a guide as to where to sew while you're sewing. That way you don't have to continuously measure, you can just follow that marking line as a guide. I'm not going to be doing the full length of the back of this top, I'm just going to be doing a portion of it to demonstrate how the stitch works. So when doing a back stitch, I recommend double stranding or double threading your needle for a stronger seam. And then you'll run both layers or both um, strands of thread through the beeswax together so it acts as one strand of thread in a way. I'm not going to be knotting the thread, I am just going to make an, an anchor stitch. I usually prefer to hold my work vertically when I hand sew, but for the purpose of this video, I'll be working horizontally so that you can see um, the regular way of sewing from right to left that I'm doing. When back stitching, you may want to use pins to hold the fabric in place just in case it shifts. Um, as you back stitch, it can be a, a kind of tighter stitch than the running stitch, so sometimes it can shift the fabric up and down, or it can move if you're working with two layers of fabric like we are. 
I prefer to pin along the line that I've drawn and then remove the pins as I go. Then by removing the pins as I go, then I'm able to take them out as I continue sewing down the length so they don't shift. I'm going to be working away from myself um, in a right to left direction from the uh, view that you're you're watching so to start off I'm going to remove the first pin and anchor my thread by making a few stationary stitches I'm just double checking that the measurement is correct here And so it doesn't shift I'm going to just immediately start sewing that area so I'm just gonna make a couple stationary stitches here just to start off the stitching line stationary stitches in one place and sometimes when I make my anchor stitch I may knot it as I go which I'm doing here um, since it is a back stitch, I like to make that stitch pretty sturdy since it is going to be holding two pieces of fabric together and creating a seam. So to do a back stitch, what we do is you begin by stitching like a running stitch only instead of continuing forward over and over and putting your needle in and out of the fabric you only create one stitch at a time and you're going to insert the needle once you've made your first stitch you're going to bring your needle back into the exit point of the previous stitch that you made so where we previously came out is where we're bringing our needle back through and then we're going to come out about a eighth of an inch away from where our thread is currently coming out from We want to make sure that the distance is kind of equal as we stitch we want to make sure that the stitches are evenly spaced and the same length so again we take the needle pull it through and then to make a new stitch we put the needle through the exit point of the previous stitch pulling it out about one eighth or a quarter inch away from where we just pulled our thread out from. And we continue to do that. As we continue to do that, then we create a series of stitches that are made close together. And so this stitch in essence mimics a machine stitch in the best way. Now I'm not really pulling too tight. Um, on this part, I'm kind of just doing an average tension here, um, just a, a general tension. But generally, when you're doing a back stitch, you want to make your stitches kind of tight, um, give it a little tug so that you can make sure that they're tight enough so they don't come apart. Now, now let's take a look at the back of this. And you can first off see that there's a gap at the beginning of my stitching. It's because I made my second stitch by going forward instead of bringing my needle back through the first anchor stitch. But the principle still applies and the integrity will still be good. But you can also see that the back of the stitching um, is also uh, an overlapping style. So they're not simple stitches right next to each other like the front. 
And so when we talk about tension, this is what I mean. You'll, if you have a looser tension, you'll kind of see the stitches between the seams. All you have to do is just pull a little tighter as you pull out your thread when you make each stitch. So you're just gonna give a little tug. And here I'm demonstrating how I continued the stitch here. Um, I continued to go down uh, off screen and I made um, some tighter stitches and you can't really see those stitches in between because I made them tighter versus the beginning you can you can see it. So of course if you were doing this on a raw edge you'd want to finish the edges so let's talk about how to do a basic stitch that helps you finish the edges of your seams. So I'm going to change the way I'm holding this to make it easier for myself. I've already threaded my needle and now I'm going to anchor my thread about a quarter inch away from the edge. I'm going through both layers. This is actually an overcast stitch that we're going to be doing right now. Overcast stitches are usually done on one layer of fabric at each edge of the, the layers, um, but I'm going through both layers for the purpose of this video. So I'm anchoring my thread here about a quarter inch away from the edge. And all I'm going to do now is bring the needle and thread from the back side to the front, wrapping the thread around in a spiral motion to encase the edge of the fabric. And then I'm moving my needle up another eighth or quarter of an inch further up from the last stitch to begin a new stitch, still wrapping around my thread to the edge of the fabric. I'm also adjusting my stitches so that they sit diagonal and neat um, along the edge because the spiral is what keeps the raw edge encased. And so again, just bringing the needle from the back through to the front, allowing the thread to wrap around the edge of the fabric. And now I'm just going to adjust so that I can make sure all the diagonals go the same way um, and that they're in the right direction. And if you want to add a little more tension so you can make sure that they don't come loose and that they're not um, too loose, then you just give a little tug to the, to the tail end of your thread just to make sure it's, it's stuck there. So being completely honest, the overcast stitch isn't a stitch that I use much. I prefer to enclose my raw edges with French seams. So after learning the, the first two basic stitches, the French seam is very simple to do. I'm going to demonstrate the French seam on the shoulder seam of this top. And as you can see, I have wrong sides together, not right sides together like we usually do. Um, I'm demonstrating this by showing that the back seam is on the inside of the fabric and not on the outside. And so that's how we're going to begin the French seam is um, wrong sides together. And so I'm just going to straighten up the shoulder seams of the top here. And we're using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So to achieve a 5 8 inch seam allowance, I'm first going to make my first seam a quarter inch and measure using my seam gauge. And then my second seam will be 3 8 inches, which will add up to 5 8 inch in the long run. So I'm going to start first with um, pinning my shoulders together at the quarter inch seam allowance, which I have done here. So once we have all of this pinned, we're going to begin with a running stitch. And you can use a back stitch here, but I prefer to use a running stitch for this part. And I've done my running stitch with a 1 4th inch seam allowance, and that's what I'm doing here. So now that I've finished the seam with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down the length of the shoulder seam, then I'm going to go ahead and finger press the seam open and flat so that when I turn it, it lays 
flat so that it's easier to work with. You can do this just by separating the opening of the seam, um, splitting it open, and then just pressing the middle of the seam flat so that it lays easily. This is a good time to trim the seam allowance too if you had any fraying or just wanted to trim it lower so it's not caught when you begin the next part of um, this step. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is just because uh, I, I understand how to make it work without trimming it. So we're going to turn this now right sides together and finger press the seam flat on the outside. Well, actually it's the inside. So we're just going to press that seam flat so that it lays nice and clean along the seam. And now we're going to mark our seam allowance again 3 8 inch away from the edge for the seam allowance and pin that in place. And now we're working right sides together so we're on the inside of the top. And we're going to be back stitching this seam in place to finish up the seam. So I'm marking my 3 8 inch seam allowance here. Um, because it's a quarter inch on the inside and I'm doing just above that, then I shouldn't catch um, any of the frays or anything on the inside of the seam. And I'm going to pin down the length. Just to give you an idea of how this works, the raw edge that we just sewed with a running stitch is on the inside of the seam we're about to enclose. So that's why it's up to you if you want to use a back stitch to begin the French seam. Um, it's completely up to you, but I just like to use a running stitch. So now I'm going to pin this all in place. And then we're just going to back stitch along that enclosed edge that we have just to um, keep it enclosed and keep the raw edge on the inside. So now that we have this part of the seam done, I'll just show you what it looks like here. Um, I'm just going to put my needle into the, into the top just so I can come back to it later. But um, this is how the seam will look on the inside and then when it's pressed, then we will press it to the back and it will lay flat. And then on the outside of the top, it just looks like a basic seam. There's no frays, no threads poking out, nothing showing. It just looks like a, a basic seam. So as we continue down the length of the shoulder seam, it will all look just like that. And then we have a nice sturdy back stitch, so there's no stitches showing. And if we pull, then we can't see anything on the inside. Just want to make sure that your back stitches for that last part are nice and sturdy and tight. Not taut, but tight. So hopefully you can see why I prefer this method of finishing seams over the overcast stitch. It's much neater and looks more professional.